Hey, what's up guys and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at some of the latest tweaks available for your devices running iOS 11 to iOS 11.4 beta 3. So we're gonna take a look at the newest and top tweaks of the last couple of months. Granted, not too many have been coming out, but I'm gonna go over some of my favorites that I've found. So first up, let's talk about some dark mode tweaks. Now you guys have heard of Eclipse X or Eclipse 10 for iOS 11. Now this is an overall system-wide dark mode tweak, but sometimes it just doesn't get things quite right. So to start off, I'm gonna talk about a few tweaks that are dark mode tweaks that are awesome for apps that Eclipse X just didn't quite work for. So the first one we're gonna talk about is Dark G Maps. Now this one is a dark mode for Google Maps. So this is an awesome one if you guys like to use Google Maps but want an OLED type of style for this application. Overall, it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, and really is a nice addition to Google Maps. Now next up, we also have IGOLED, which is a dark mode for Instagram, which absolutely looks fantastic. You know, for every tab here, we have dark theming behind the application, and overall, it just looks great when you go ahead and select a photo, like, I don't know what this is, but all of the UI around it just looks absolutely fantastic. It's a nice dark addition. Um, and does it really nice. It makes the text white and easy to see. So again, the first one we went over was dark G maps. That was I G O L E D right there. These are all the tweaks in today's video. If you guys are interested, they'll be located down below in this video's description or potentially on a best tech info article. Anyway, the next one up that I wanted to talk about is dark photos. So I'll actually exit out of the photos app right here. And if I just go to my overall photos right here, as you guys can see, the background of the Photos app right here um, is entirely black. And it just looks absolutely fantastic when you're going around and selecting different areas within um, the Photos app right there. Fluffy friends, that's really funny. But overall, the dark background looks really sweet, and I really enjoy this dark Photos app. Now, next up we have Dark Sounds, which is actually for Apple Music, and again, it's just yet another dark mode tweak. This one for Apple Music, and overall, this one just did a really nice job at nailing it with the punch right here with Apple Music. All of the tabs look absolutely fantastic um, and gives a really nice dark theme for Apple Music if you use it. I personally use Spotify, but for those Apple Music users, that's a great one right there. All right, so let's go back into this and go down. The next one is called Moonshine. Now, when you begin to charge your device, um, it basically creates an awesome little animation on screen, letting you know that your device is plugged in. And then at nighttime, it actually turns into a nightstand, um, just like the Apple Watch does, showing the time and date and the charging status, essentially. It looks super awesome. Now, next up, we have Elfin which is this guy right here that's been hiding. It is a music player right here, and it's awesome with Evanesco in the background. This stays present, which is really sweet. Um, so if you guys wanted to have it maybe right there um, on your home screen or something like that, or what I usually use it for is if I'm in Google Maps, say for example, um, I can use this while I'm using Google Maps or while it's navigating basically, and then just to dismiss it, you can just throw it right to the side and this can go anywhere that you want and then just swipe out to pull it up. But you have all your music controls right there and then you can just throw it away right there on the side. Anyways, that one's called Elfin. That one is pretty sweet as well. Next up we have Crystal. This one's awesome because if you're in Notification Center right here and you have a bunch of notifications, instead of having to clear every single one of them like this, um, you know, that can take some time. Even if you have like Stack XI, um, sometimes it just doesn't work. Sometimes you just want to get rid of everything. Well, now you can just swipe down from the top and it clears all of your notifications really quickly. That one is actually really useful. One of my favorites of today. And again, that one's crystal. And then more frequently used emojis. So if say, for example, I'm in my text messages app and I pull up the emoji keyboard right here. If I click on that one more time, as you guys can see, we have frequently used right here. And it basically just extends how many frequently used emojis. Usually it's only a couple of rows. And I think this one actually goes all the way up to nine or so. And it goes more if you use more emojis. 
but that one's really nice. It basically extends the frequently used emojis right there. And again, if you guys want this awesome messages tweak, which gives like a nice transparent background, um, that one is translucent messages, but that was on an older video. Anyway, going back into today's list, the next one we have is switches. Now this one is actually really cool. I'm just gonna go into the settings app to show you guys this one. I also have better settings for a dark mode and just a custom settings app basically, but switches is this guy right here. It lets you customize um, what your switches looks like essentially. So if I go down to the tweak, I'll show you guys all the options that you have right here. You have a ton of options to choose from. Oh, <laughs> that's really cool actually. Um, basically customize the switches as you want. Uh, I guess you have to select it, have the check mark there. Now it says donut right there, click respring. And now, like I was just saying, if I go into the settings app, now I have the donut as my switch right there. So that one's a really nice user-friendly one. Um, I really enjoy just little customization tweaks like that. Now if I go back into my photos app, pull up the list that we have right here. After switches, we have Twitter tweak. Now this one actually is really cool if you use Twitter a lot. I personally do just to keep up with the daily news and events. But this one's awesome because when you're scrolling, it now allows for full screen scrolling. And so if I scroll down and then once I stop, then the UI pulls up over everything else. But if I continue to scroll, it goes back to full screen and I think it just looks super awesome. But if I stop, then all the UI comes back up. So that one's called Twitter Tweak. That one is pretty awesome as well. We have my title widget name. And basically this just lets you name your widgets, change these to whatever you want right here. I actually don't think I have this one installed, but essentially you get to choose what these are called in the tweak settings. So pretty self-explanatory. Next up we have battery color. And this lets you change your battery color right here, or excuse me, it dynamically updates based on the percentage of battery that you have. As you guys can see, I'm at 85% right now. So I'm in the green, I have a lot of battery left but this changes to yellow and to red as your battery lowers down. So that one is called battery color. Next up, we are just going into some of the more specific ones right now. NFC Writer X, which is this guy right here, lets you scan and read and write NFC tags. So this one's pretty cool. If you have a tag like this guy right here, just an NFC tag, if I go up to read tag and I can just approach it right here, it says tag detected and it can show you all the information. You also have the ability to write tags right here and uh, copy tags or format tags, even emulate tags right here. Now let's go back into the last couple, GPS Master. This one actually is one of the best GPF spooping tweaks that I've ever found. If I go into it, it is right here. So with this tweak, you have a couple options. You can create a navigation route, which is actually going to follow the roads on the map. You have a sweep, which is basically just gonna go from point A to point B in a straight linear line, or you can just fake your GPS right here. So um, if I want per se, if I wanna go right about here, I can put my location there. I can turn fake GPS on right there. So now if I'm in Google Maps and I click on my location, it's actually going to take me to the place that the GPS spoofer has placed me at. This is not my actual location. This is just where it is spoofing to right now. But it's really cool. You can create routes. Like I said, if you go to navigation, you can kind of create little routes like that and then turn it on right there. So now within Google Maps, as you guys can see, it's actually navigating and whoa, had a little bit of a glitch there but it actually is moving down and moving my location, spoofing essentially on that route that we set. This is again in Google Maps. If I go back to this, this is the route that it's following. So I thought that was pretty cool. If you guys use GPS faker location or anything like that, those types of apps, um, this one's a sweet one for that type of thing. And then very lastly, we have clean passcode 11. So if you guys see, this is what the normal passcode screen looks like right here. You have emergency, cancel, you have all these letters behind it, enter passcode, all of this information. And then once it comes back up, I'm just gonna go directly into the passcode screen right here just by swiping up. As you guys can see, a lot of the extra emergency, cancel, and basically the four digit thing right here. You don't really know how many digits this is. It just makes the passcode screen look a lot more simplistic. I really like it. It's a minor tweak, but it is an awesome one. 
Anyway guys, that is my entire list for today's video. I know it's getting rather minor. Um, there haven't been too many crazy tweaks. I would say something like the GPS uh, location one or the NFC rider. Those ones are pretty incredible, but honestly, I get by with using some of the old school favorite tweaks like better CC 11, duo, um, power module right here. Some of those are my absolute favorites just because the control center I think is the number one area that Apple needs to improve. I really like how that looks. I like changing the layout, making my icons a little bit bigger, adding an extra row, removing icon labels, having Noctis 11 down here for the dark dock, just little things like that. Um, palette right here for the colorized um, widgets pane going down right here with the colorized notifications when I actually have them. Um, just little things like that make jailbreaking awesome. And some of the tweaks in today's video are really nice. I will say I do use like dark photos, the dark Instagram mode, um, and some of those tweaks a lot. I will say um, this one is great, but it does get kind of annoying because you can never get rid of it. There's always this dark thing right here. Um, but some of the other ones like, what was the, um, what was the, the charging one called again? So I would say from today's video, absolutely crystal. That one was awesome to get rid of notifications. More frequently used emojis. That's just an easy one. Um, battery color is nice, but that's not really too crazy. Moonshine, I will say that one is awesome because whenever you plug in your phone, you get this awesome animation so you know your phone is plugged in and charging and or if you place it on a wireless charging mat, it actually is aligned correctly. So those are really sweet. There has been too many crazy ones like I said. I just wanted to go over some of the latest tweaks in today's video because as of late, I'm really debating on updating to iOS 12. But let me know down below what you guys think. Should I update my phone to iOS 12, 12.0.1 to be exact, before the signing window closes? You know, I honestly could update later with blobs if I so desired, but like I said, guys, iOS 12.0.1 is still being signed by Apple as of recording this video at 11.38 this morning, and I'm really almost debating on just upgrading to that. I'm going to be getting an Apple Watch Series 4, which will require me to update to the latest version of iOS, or at least that version of iOS 12. So let me know what you guys think. Should I take the plunge and update to iOS 12.0.1 while it's still being signed by Apple? Like I said, I probably could update later with blobs, but unfortunately I did do that with this phone. And right now, um, after using blobs, when I go to set up Face ID, um, this is the iPhone 10, and unfortunately just little things like Face ID is not working on this phone, and so I'm almost debating on just updating to iOS 12 via the official way so everything works perfectly fine on this phone. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching today's Top Tweaks video. I hope you guys thought it was somewhat interesting taking a look at some of the latest tweaks out there for iOS 11.3.1, 11.4, Beta 3, and basically the iOS 11 jailbreak for either Electra or Uncover. Right now I currently am using Uncover. It's been pretty awesome. I really would highly suggest to use that jailbreak over Electra. But in any case, guys, thank you so much for watching. Definitely subscribe if you want to stay tuned for more jailbreak updates and hopefully an iOS 12 jailbreak here sooner than later. Definitely hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed today's video. Um, thank you so much for watching. But until next time, guys, this is Tony signing out.